Even before it opens, America's newest mega reservoir, a massive project capable of storing 90,000 acre feet of water, is facing a shocking crisis. Uranium has been found in the very rock used to build it. Worth nearly $700 million, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir in Colorado was designed to secure clean drinking water for 800,000 people across the Front Range. Standing 350 feet tall, it's the tallest drinking water dam built in the U.S. in over two decades, a monumental project 20 years in the making. But now, tests show uranium levels seven times above federal limits, raising serious questions about the safety of the water it will hold. How did a project meant to protect Colorado's future end up threatened by the ground beneath it? And can engineers fix the problem before it's too late? Let's find out. Colorado has a problem, and it's growing fast. The Front Range, home to cities like Loveland, Longmont, and Broomfield, is one of the fastest-growing regions in the United States. In the next 20 years, the population is expected to double. But here's the catch. While more and more people move east of the Rockies, most of the state's water, about 90% of it, still falls on the western side. For decades, engineers have worked hard to fix this imbalance. They've built a network of tunnels and canals, like the Colorado Big Thompson Project, to push western water over the Continental Divide. It was an incredible achievement for its time, but those systems are getting old, droughts are getting worse, and demand just keeps climbing. How long could this setup really last? That's the question that pushed Northern Water, a public utility serving over one million people, to act. In the early 2000s, they came up with a bold idea, something big enough to secure the region's future. Their answer? A new storage giant, sitting just west of Carter Lake. It would be more than just another reservoir. It would be a safeguard against the state's growing water crisis, a way to capture snowmelt before it's lost downstream, and to keep communities supplied through dry years. In short, it could be Colorado's next great engineering milestone. But, as with any megaproject, the challenges would be enormous. Could it be built safely? Could it survive in a time of worsening droughts and rising costs? And most importantly, could it truly solve Colorado's water problem or just delay it? Those questions set the stage for one of the most ambitious water projects in the state's history. The plan was simple but revolutionary. Build a massive off-channel reservoir to hold 90,000 acre-feet of water from the Windy Gap Project on the Colorado River. That's enough to supply about 500,000 people every year. The idea was to create a water bank, saving extra water in wet years and releasing it when droughts hit. A simple idea, but one that could change everything for northern Colorado. Getting here wasn't easy. The permitting process stretched on for almost two decades, facing tough environmental challenges and lawsuits that led to $15 million in settlements. Many wondered, was it all worth the trouble? For 12 cities and three water districts, including Loveland, Longmont, Erie, Louisville, and Broomfield, the answer was yes. For them, this wasn't just another project. It was a promise for the future. By 2021, the dream was finally turning to reality. After $700 million and 20 years of planning, Northern Water proudly called it a generational investment. It was more than just a reservoir. It was a safeguard for Northern Colorado's next hundred years. But just as the hard work seemed to be paying off, something unexpected happened. No one knew that the real test wouldn't come from drought or budget cuts, but from the earth itself. To build Chimney Hollow, engineers had to reshape an entire valley. The site was chosen carefully for its stability and quiet location, a dry basin once owned by Hewlett Packard, far from homes and towns. There were no rivers to redirect, no endangered species to move. On paper, it looked like the perfect blank canvas, but turning that calm valley into a 350-foot-tall dam was far from easy. Chimney Hollow uses a design that's rare in the United States, an asphalt-core rock-filled dam. Unlike most American dams that use a clay core, this one has a watertight asphalt barrier running right through its center. Why asphalt? Because it's flexible, durable, and better at handling pressure changes. The method was perfected in Europe, where it's been tested in some of the world's toughest environments. 
In fact, Chimney Hollow is only the second dam of its kind ever built in the country. Building it required a massive effort. Millions of cubic yards of rock were brought in to form the outer shells, while the asphalt core was built layer by layer, sealed tight to prevent even a drop from leaking through. Every section had to be tested, every layer measured for strength. The dam's size is staggering, 350 feet tall and nearly a half a mile long. Behind it, the reservoir will hold 90,000 acre-feet of water, enough to supply half a million people each year. But the real challenge wasn't just in size, it was in precision. In a project like this, even a small error could cause huge problems later. So, how do you make sure a structure this big can stand the test of time? Engineers use special sensors throughout the dam to monitor pressure, movement, and temperature. These systems track every change, giving crews data around the clock. From the air, Chimney Hollow may look simple, a wall of rock cutting across a valley. But beneath that surface lies some of the most advanced engineering in modern dam construction. It's a mix of strength, science, and strategy, built to protect northern Colorado for generations to come. Over two and a half years, crews blasted and moved nearly 25 million tons of rock from an 80-acre on-site quarry, one of the largest mining operations in Colorado's history. Haul trucks carried a 100-ton load every two minutes, working 20 hours a day without rest. All that rock was then packed into layers to form the giant embankment, stretching more than 3,700 feet, about 10 football fields long. But holding all that rock together wasn't enough. To seal it tight, engineers laid 75,000 cubic yards of hydraulic asphalt concrete using special machines and technology brought in from Switzerland. The result? A wall strong enough to hold back 29 billion gallons of water. That's about 45,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Around the dam, the site turned into a small city of its own. There was a concrete plant, an asphalt plant, and a full maintenance shop with 30 mechanics keeping 180 machines running day and night. Over 500 workers filled the site each day, including teams from Barnard Construction and the Swiss firm Valo. But the project didn't stop there. It also included a 40-foot-high saddle dam to close the Southern Valley and a 3,600-foot-long spillway made of reinforced concrete. This spillway was built to handle major storms, even those made worse by future climate change. By mid-2025, Chimney Hollow stood complete, the tallest drinking water dam built in the United States in over 20 years. Crews were getting ready to fill the reservoir by July 2025. Everything seemed to be going perfectly, until the final tests came in. That's when the numbers told a different story. Weeks before Chimney Hollow was ready to start filling, Northern Water ran one final round of water quality tests, a simple step before pumping in billions of gallons. But what happened next caught everyone off guard. The results showed something unexpected. Uranium levels in the samples were up to seven times higher than the federal safety limit for drinking water. Some readings hit 225 micrograms per liter, when the EPA's limit is just 30. How could that be? There were no factories nearby, no nuclear plants, no pollution leaks. The answer came from the ground itself. Geologists soon discovered that the granite used from the on-site quarry naturally contained small amounts of uranium minerals. When water flows over and through this rock, those minerals can slowly dissolve and mix into the water. It's a natural process, one that often goes unnoticed until someone looks closely. But this wasn't the first warning sign. Two years earlier, in 2023, heavy rainstorms forced emergency runoff tests. The results showed slightly higher uranium levels, but nothing that seemed dangerous, so work went on as usual. Then came 2025. Engineers simulated what would happen when the full reservoir came into contact with the dam material. That's when the numbers suddenly spiked. The tests made it clear. Once filled, the reservoir could hold water laced with unsafe uranium levels. What was supposed to be a victory for Colorado's water future now looked like a looming crisis. How do you fix a problem that's buried deep in the very rock holding the project together? 
The good news is that the uranium isn't radioactive enough to cause immediate harm. Bad news? It's still toxic over time, especially for the kidneys if too much is consumed. As soon as the results came in, Northern Water stopped all plans to fill the reservoir. They promised that no water would reach homes until it was proven safe. But the news spread fast, and so did public concern. People started asking tough questions. Should they have caught this earlier? Could better surveys have predicted it before construction began? Now, engineers are racing against time to find answers. Three possible fixes are on the table. The first is dilution and blending, mixing the affected water with cleaner supplies from nearby reservoirs until uranium levels drop below the EPA limit. The second is advanced filtration, using reverse osmosis or ion exchange systems at treatment plants. It could work, but it might cost tens of millions of dollars. The third is natural flushing, slowly filling and draining the reservoir again and again, hoping the contaminants wash out over time. Right now, the plan is to begin a controlled fill phase under close watch. If the uranium levels stay stable, the dam could finally go into full operation by 2027. If they don't, the project could face more delays and even more costs. For the 800,000 people depending on Chimney Hollow, from Broomfield to Loveland to Greeley, that means waiting even longer for the clean, reliable water they were promised. After two decades of planning, billions in funding, and years of construction, Chimney Hollow was meant to secure Colorado's water future. Instead, it's now a symbol of how even the most advanced projects can face unexpected twists. The question is no longer just when the reservoir will open, but how safe its water will be when it does. So what do you think? Are mega water projects like this worth the risks? Or are we pushing too far against nature? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next story.